Hello, everyone, and welcome to a new episode of the OC Show. This is episode 15. This is Tim. My name's Peter. First things first, there will be a Q&A on August 10th, next Monday. Yes, exactly. So like every show, we have a Q&A where you guys can ask us questions on the topic we're going to talk about today, but also about uh, anything else related to overclocking you would like to ask us. So tune in on the OCTV Twitch channel Sunday on the Sunday 10th, like you say, 9 p.m. Eastern time. That would be 9 a.m. over here in Taipei on the Monday 11th. And if you're in Europe, around 3 a.m. if you're not having a night's sleep or something. Pretty cool, yeah. Um, <laughs> so let's dig into the first topic of the day. Um, we saw Kingpin push his single GTX 980 Ti to over uh, 13K in uh, Fire Strike Extreme. Yeah, um, that's a single, new record on that benchmark. I it's suppose. not a record, it's well, a global first place. Yep. <laughs> um, so yeah, he used his, uh, his very new GeForce GTX 980 Ti Kingpin Edition launched by EVJ. Which has, a, which has an epic guide actually written by Tin and Kingpin on the Kingpin Cooling Forums. The card was clocked to 2.1 gigahertz on both the GPU and the memory, so that's pretty impressive. Yeah. He's the first one to break the, through the barrier of, uh, of 13K with a single graphics card, and uh, his two closest competitors, Dan Kopp and, uh, and Ronaldo, at the time he posted, were only at uh, 12.3K. There's uh, actually not that many people above 12K to begin with. Uh, no, very little actually. Yeah. So uh, as as the moment that we are that we were recording this, uh, Ronaldo already uploaded a new score to 12.6K, which okay. was probably a backup. Yeah. And then we have Dan Kopp at 12.3K, and then Steponzi uh, above 12K as well. He was the first yeah. one to break uh, 12K. But that's about it in the, in the age level rankings. Well, so it's going to be quite competitive among those guys, I guess, because <laughs> well, well, now the guiders out there should be probably helping out those who buy the camping card to uh, yeah. get and closer to it. EVJ has a pretty interesting uh, deal going on with the with the card they uh, they sold in different ASIC SKUs mm -hmm. as well. Uh, from what I've heard, everything was already sold out, at least uh, the upper skew okay, ones. Yeah. So you cannot get the best ASIC cards anymore, but you can still have the card with the Epic PCB and then just read through the guide where you can overclock using, you know, even your Raspberry Pi and stuff. Yeah, it's pretty well done, actually, very detailed. It's uh, uh, one, of the, one of the most detailed overclocking guides I've seen. Yeah, very good. So check that out on the Kingpin Cooling Forums, right? Yep. Uh, second topic for today, the um, Gigabyte OC School at the Yusko LAN Party in uh, Spain. So that was organized by uh, another clocker called Centino X, um, who is uh, living in Spain and who goes there every year since quite a while. Um, the Yusko LAN is the, one of the biggest LANs in Europe as well. They have 6,000 participants this year, plus thousands more in terms of visitors. So a very big LAN party. Lasted for about three days, and that was two weeks ago now, or, or last weekend. And uh, so they had their uh, workshop where they were explaining overclocking, you know, the basics, but also explaining how it works on the competitive side with the OC Esports website. And then they had, of course, a little bit of liquid nitrogen to, you know, a bit of smoke and also show what extreme overclocking is about. So that seemed pretty cool, actually. Cool. Nice. Sounds like a, an idea for a world tour stop. If it looks me. definitely like an ideal word or stuff, I have to say. This is very, very tempting. <laughs> so, yeah, maybe for next year. Uh, third topic, Windows 10 launched last weekend, yeah. I think. Uh, I've already upgraded my, my notebook. I already had it running on a couple of test systems as well. Um, from, the, from the first looks, it looks like it has a little bit more performance in the 3D benchmarks. Yeah. Um, for the old legacy 2D benchmarks, of course, Windows XP is still better. Um, <laughs> of we're, course. We're not going to get away from that 15-year-old operating system right now. Um, but yeah, Windows 10. It, it, Windows 10 has the same issue as Windows 8 with the RTC timers being selected by default. So you have to pick the specific benchmarks that are Windows 10 ready. Uh, that means uh, there is XTU, there's all the 3D marks, there's a couple of PC marks, there's GPU Pi, uh, and uh, there's a couple others yeah. that I'm probably forgetting. So what makes them ready is that they use a different clock, right? Uh, yeah, they use the high-performance event timer that Intel has in their in their CPUs as well. AMD mm -hmm. actually has in their CPUs. So that one operates at a, at a, a frequency of, I think, 14 uh, point something something kilohertz. Okay. Um, and that one will, um, if you use that one, your benchmark times timers will be correct as well. Yeah. So, so it's not depending on the clock of your system. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and some benchmarks that will, uh, that will uh, 
um, GPU Pi, for example, will ask you to change the default timer to the, the high performance event timer. Uh, XTU will automatically use that, that timer, so there is no issues there whatsoever. For 3D Mark, you will need to um, verify your score online. So they didn't put any fix into okay. this. All they did is, um, is put on their website a notification like, hey, um, the timer is off. Okay. Yeah. And then it's not a legit benchmark. Hmm, I see. Well, we'll see how that turns out. I guess a lot of people will try it out and try to find a few tweaks here and there. Geneven is working nice. actually on a tool that will uh, allow you to create data files with screenshots for all of your benchmarks that will check which timer you're using. So we expect that uh, in, the, in the, the next couple of days to be oh, released. That would be very convenient. And all benchmarks would be able to do Windows yes. 10. Talking about benchmarks, uh, let's move on to competitions. And it has been quite a busy weekend since it's the start of the month of August. Uh, about among the competitions that started, there was the Road to Pro with the Pro C series and the Challenger series. So what about that? So the Road to Pro is our, uh, is our full-blown overclocking series that we have on OC Esports with all sorts of different divisions. And each of the different divisions have a different uh, hardware requirement. So Division 1 would be with the Intel Core i7s and any single GPU graphics card. Division 5 is with AMD APUs and only using the integrated graphics cards. Um, so this year, we launched the first full season, which yeah. has three rounds of each two months. And um, just uh, three days ago, I suppose, two days ago on August 1st, we launched the third round of the, the Challenger series so the of 2015. One, right? The last round of 2015. So after this round, we'll know who's the division champion in all of the, in all of the um, well, in the different divisions, obviously. <laughs> and then um, all these points also accumulate to one official world overclocking ranking of 2015. But that one ends at the end of December. So there are okay. still a couple of competitions to come if you want to gather Catch some points there. Yeah. <laughs> OK, so is there anything new uh, for this uh, um, third round? Do we have a Fury X, for example, and new hardware integrated into those rounds? So the Fury X is allowed in the stages where it's it's allowed. So mm -hmm. you'll have the ones, um, the Division 1 with the Intel Core i7, the high end, and then the high end with the AMD FX CPUs. That's mm -hmm. where you can use the Fury X. Uh, Skylake, if you're referring to that one, will not be allowed in any okay. of the divisions except for a Pro C, where there's two stages dedicated to, to Skylake. Um, Skylake hasn't launched yet, and if it's not la launched yet, then it's not yeah. included in the, in the rankings. Right, good. Uh, other competition that continued, that's the Gigabyte Z97 last um, competitions. Two competitions here, one ambient and one extreme. Uh, we have the guys, um, so we have uh, Arham from Indonesia with 68 points in the ambient part that is leading, followed by Cruz N uh, from France with 56 points, and SSK Mercer from Australia with 52 points. Uh, on the extreme side of thing, we have a uh, lucky noob uh, from Indonesia who told us uh, last time in the live Q&A that he was definitely going strong on this competition. Um, so he's leading right now the extreme one with 79 points. Uh, we have uh, Mamchetto 50, uh, with 54 points from France, okay. another French, very good. And uh, Achilles uh, fif with 50 points from India. So Achilles, we, we saw Hungary. the... He's from Hungary. He is from Hungary. Bala is from Hungary, yes. All oh, right, true. I wrote yeah. the wrong name here, exactly. <laughs> uh, good, you tell me. So there's 27 uh, days left to beat those guys if you're competing in, those, in this competition. Uh, there's some cool prizes. Of course, there's always a bit of hardware as Lucky Draw and a little bit of cash as well. So you should definitely check out this competition. Another competition? MSI? The Godlike OC competition yeah. or, or Godlike OC tournament. Also has an ambient and an extreme counterpart. We see that from all the vendors lately that they've split up the competition. Yeah, I find it great. You know, finally there's some stuff for a bit of everyone, yeah. I think. Yeah. Uh, so in the extreme counterpart, there's currently only two people uh, participating. The competition is pretty much just started, which is uh, Dan Kopp from Germany, yeah. as uh, currently ranked first. And then we have Top Dog from the UK ranked uh, second. Because um, there's a bit of sandbagging right there. Yeah. The interesting part is that Top Dog is currently leading in the official world overclocking ranking on OC Esports with mm. 570 odd points. Um, it, it, we have to say though that he's leading in those rankings because the, the round three of the Road to Pro just started and he's participating in this competition. So all those points already pushed to her to his uh, to his profile. And so we'll see him drop in the next coming weeks and months. Um, in the ambient part of the 
uh, MSI OC tournament, godlike tournament. Yeah. We have um, uh, Comias from France, exactly. uh, Master Bits from Hungary, and then uh, Noxonite from the UK. Mm. So uh, it's a, it's a, it's interesting if you if you're following these competitions that a lot of the names are names that we haven't seen in the previous year. So yeah. especially in the ambient section, there's a lot of new blood coming and participating in these in these events. Hmm. Um, it's also not worthy to say that the MSI, the, the, the ambient competition, has almost 60 participants as well. Wow, so that's, good, a, yeah. Yeah, that's a pretty interesting very uh, attractive, I guess. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, talking about New Blood, uh, we didn't mention as well that uh, this weekend also there's a new Rookie Rumble that started, as well as a new Novice Nimble, and as well as a Old School is Best School Round 5. Uh, so concerning the Novice Nimble, there's pretty much no changes. Uh, uh, Novice Nimble, there, there is changes, sorry. Rookie Rumble, there's uh, new, no changes to the benchmark. It's the same uh, same old, I would say. So you have uh, XTU, you have um, Azure Bot Prime and GPI. If you are participating in the Novice Nimble, here there's a few extra changes compared to the last round, if I'm not mistaken. So you have a 5G XTU, Geekbench Multi on AMD CPUs, uh, PC Mark 7, interesting choice, um, GPU Pi uh, on NVIDIA cards and Cloud Gay on AMD. So it's open to a bit of everything. And of course, you have to find a team there. So that's the spirit of the competition. Old School is Best School is actually also very interesting. So it's the last round of the Old School is Best School competition series. Uh, there was five rounds in total, each mm -hmm. lasting for two months. The last round will be with Socket 3 CPUs and then Voodoo graphics cards. Oh, that remembers so me, my, my young days. It's very old hardware. <laughs> that's why it's called Old School. Yeah, <laughs> all right, cool. Um, Elf, and of course, uh, because the, the summer is here, we are into some uh, new projects because not we have too much free time, but because we have a little bit more relaxed time in between the World Tour events and all that. And uh, so we started a new video series called the Scatterbencher. And uh, the purpose of this series is to um, show you how to overclock uh, very quickly, very simply, uh, um, a mid-range, I would say, entry slash mid-range system. So not the uber killer system that we usually have. Um, and uh, to tell you exactly w how to adjust this and this to get to that performance increase, and that's it. Check it out on YouTube. Just search for Scataventure, and you will find Peter in his first video series. And I guess the next one might be on Skylake, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> Who knows? Yeah, and uh, another new thing uh, we've done in the summer that started actually um, this weekend is the rigs of the week. Uh, there's so many competitions going on and you guys are taking, uh, I'd say, better and better pictures of your system. It's improving a little bit uh, from last year, I would say, and it starts to be interesting to share those uh, system pictures as well. So we're going to release every day for at the term as is interesting uh, pictures of your system. So if you guys have a cool picture, a cool system, just send us a message and we might just promote a little bit your system, you know, and tell everyone in which competition you participated. All right? Cool stuff. So we've arrived at the outro of this video, according to the sheet here <laughs> on, uh, on the notebook. And we have to remind you there is the live Q&A on yes. Sunday or Monday or yeah. during the night, depending on where you live. Yeah, don't forget, so Sunday 9 p.m. Eastern time in the U.S. All right, cool. Till the next time then. Yeah, keep pushing it.